I'm not quite used to it yet. Um, but if it's a little bit loud, I apologize. I'm going to do my best uh, to be loud and clear for you. So today, you know, I'm going to stick with the theme of nutrition and balance. Um, so I want to close out this month with the topic of uh, how eating organic really impacts our health. You know, I get asked a lot, should I, um, you know, should I eat organic? Why should I bother? Um, is it really that important? Um, is it worth the extra few dollars? Um, so since I get asked that a lot, I just want to give you the lowdown today and kind of give you my perspective um, and my experience with that. So, you know, working with women, I'm always considering hormone health and balance, right? Um, now, when I say hormones, I'm not only talking about things like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, but also things like cortisol balance and oxytocin balance, right? Um, the thing is, is that toxins impact our hormones directly because they cause hormonal disruptions by either blocking the hormonal receptor sites or um, just disrupting our natural hormone uh, activity. Um, so obviously that can really throw our hormones out of whack, right? So as a general rule for eating, I highly recommend uh, focusing on eating clean foods. And so, you know, what, what does that mean? What does clean mean? Well, the majority of food that's available to us has been contaminated, right? And it's been contaminated with chemicals and it's deficient in vital nutrients because of that. I mean, if we think about it, you know, how much of the food that we buy is covered in plastic? Uh, one of the uh, main known chemicals that comes off of plastic bags, uh, styrofoam trays, plastic bottles and tubs are phthalates. Uh, which, you know, is is crazy. It totally affects our hormones and it leaches into our foods, right? Um, in addition, you know, packaged foods full of chemical preservatives, colorings, flavorings, flavor enhancers, other additives, um, things like trans fats even. Um, and, you know, trans fats are basically like embalming fluid, which is nasty. Right? I don't want to eat that. Um, but anyways, you know, and, and then on top of that, you know, fresh produce, uh, grains, um, these things are typically grown with fertilizers and herbicides and fungicides and other pesticides, right? So obviously there's a bunch of ways that we can be exposed to hormone disrupting chemicals, but one area that we have the most control over, at least a lot of control over, is our food because we can choose specific foods that are not only um, lower in pesticides, um, herbicides, synthetic hormones, um, antibiotics, and other chemicals, but these foods are also way more nutrient dense with much higher levels of antioxidants, okay? So I wanna show you a picture on my phone um, that it just kind of depicts a uh, cool thing, so I think you can see that. So basically what I'm showing you here is a graph and you can see uh, different minerals, right? So here's an example of how glyphosate or Roundup depletes plant nutrients. So you can see here that iron, manganese, and zinc were dramatically increased, oh, decreased, okay, there we go, dramatically decreased um, by adding glyphosate. So you can see the green is without glyphosate and the yellow or the gold is with glyphosate, right? So, and then I've got another picture for you. Um, this is kind of crazy, but um, here's a photo demonstrating how uh, conventional meat is tainted with hormones and antibiotics, right? So imagine what those hormones are doing inside of your body. Anyone out there have excess weight anywhere, right? So you can see that these these chickens are like monster chickens, right? And I think that says like 1953 versus 2008, right? And day 70 versus day 48. Like that's crazy, right? Gross. Um, okay, so now I'm obviously I'm not showing you these pictures to like scare you. I'm not like a fear monger, but um, instead, you know, I just want you to see it as an opportunity to really empower yourself and your family to choose foods that are cleaner. Okay. So eating local, organic, pasture, non-GMO is obviously ideal. Um, and it not only supports your current health, but it's also a, a real investment into your future health and the health of your family. 
So choosing to eat clean food also benefits local organic farming practices and the environment. So I mean, it's like a win-win-win situation, right? So one thing you're probably thinking or maybe friends have brought up to you is, you know, well, that all sounds good and fine and dandy, right? But organic foods are way too expensive, right? Are they? But, um, you know, if you're thinking this, you're not alone. Um, I find that there's a lot of concern surrounding budget and clean eating. Um, so I just want to introduce you to, or perhaps remind you about, uh, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So these are two resources that should hopefully help you make the best decisions uh, for you and your family um, while also budgeting your finances. Um, and these lists that are provided by the Environmental Working Group or in uh, ewg.org, I'll put that in the comments um, when I'm done here. But um, basically they break down which fruits and vegetables have the most contamination and which ones you have, or which ones that have the least contamination. So you can really purchase, um, you know, conventionally grown varieties if you need to. Um, so yeah, I'll put those in the notes. And then uh, if you're confused, this is a little tip, if you're confused about whether or not uh, a fruit or a vegetable is organic, um, because believe me, I have before, sometimes all those little signs and like colors and blah get confusing. And sometimes you're like, is this organic or not? Um, but basically, uh, just look on the sticker or label for a nine before the four digit um, number. I can't remember what that number is called. CPU, CPU number. Um, but so it'll be like nine, four, five, two, three, or whatever the produce number is. Um, anyways, if it's got the nine, then it's organic. Um, all right, so these uh, lists are the EWG list, the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen, are produce specific, so just fruits and vegetables. Um, so you won't see anything on there regarding animal products uh, like meat, dairy, eggs, right? Um, you also won't see anything about coffee, but um, I highly, highly, highly recommend that all animal products um, and coffee um, are organic at the very least. Um, ideally, I recommend you know grass-fed meats, uh, pastured eggs, not just free range. Um, if you want to learn more about the differences there, shoot me a message. I'm happy to talk to you about that. Um, but pastured eggs and dairy from grass-fed cows as well. So I know this isn't feasible at all times, so just do your best. Um, but you know, when you purchase these high-quality animal products, you're also getting an increase in um, healthy anti-inflammatory fats too. So you're decreasing those uh, pro-inflammatory fats um, and increasing those good omega-3s by getting those grass-fed um, grass meats. Uh, what else? So, oh yeah, I also wanted to tell you, I'm obviously reading some notes I made. Um, so also be aware um, that the term natural <laughs> when it comes to food products, uh, this mucks people up a lot, but honestly, seeing natural on a label doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything to me. Um, you know, you could have 100% natural canola oil and it's still totally GMO. So please avoid that. Do not get sucked into, you know, the natural thing, whatever. That's really frustrating to me. <laughs> um, so uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, so the interesting thing to me here, you know, in regards to this natural labeling is that, you know, there's this huge paradigm shift that's happening and it's causing an increase in demand for healthier products, which is Amazing, that's fantastic, right? I'm not saying it's not, but um, you know, we live in a society that really thrives on making money off of the consumer, right? So we have to be our own best advocates and build our awareness around the choices that we make and where we choose to spend our money, okay? All right, I hope all that makes sense so far. Um, to wrap up, I want to give you some additional ways to limit your exposure to these hormone disrupting chemicals, right? Um, so first, if you do have, uh, or if you have purchased conventionally grown produce off the Clean 15 um, or otherwise, uh, uh, be sure to remove any of the surface pesticide residues waxes, uh, fungicides, fertilizers. Um, you can do that by soaking them in a mild solution, like a diluted solution of additive-free soap. Um, I prefer pure Castile soap, so something like, uh, you know, scent-free Dr. Bronner's. Uh, I like the baby one, the baby Dr. Bronner's one. 
sorry, it's really windy. Um, anyways, uh, so second, if you're buying packaged foods, um, be sure they don't contain preservatives such as BHT, BHA, uh, benzoate, uh, and sulfites, um, and also things like food coloring such as FD&C, red, blue, yellow. I'm watching a squirrel chase birds. It's really cute. <laughs> Um, uh, or any artificial sweeteners, things like sucralose, aspartame, gross, right? We don't want to put those in our body. Um, third, limit your exposure to canned foods, especially meat and fish, along with plastic bottle bottles or containers or, um, you know, plastic bottles or containers for water um, and high acid foods uh, because these can have toxins like bisphenol A and other plasticizers that have been shown to disrupt our um, hormone function. Again, I think it's also important to say, you know, I think it's, uh, it, it's nice if a bottle or a package says BPA free, but keep in mind that that's just one isolated chemical plasticizer that's been uh, discovered. But, you know, what about BPB and BPC and BPD and, you know, BPZ? There's all sorts of different plasticizers. So I would just sort of recommend, you know, avoiding plastics in general. They're hormone disruptors, okay? So just because it says BPA-free does not mean that that's necessarily okay. Um, all right, and fourth, be sure to cook using non-toxic pans, uh, skillets, and pots that aren't worn or scuffed um, because you definitely want to minimize any release of problematic compounds while you're cooking. So Teflon is not your friend. Um, try sticking with stainless steel, cast iron, or ceramic, okay? All right, I think that's all for today. Um, please let me know one takeaway that you got from today's webisode Wednesday. I would love to see that in the comments. Um, and if you have any other questions, um, go ahead and let me know too. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.